All right, it's time for me to explain how I tore my ACL. Basically, it was just another day out, out hitting a big spot. It was a Friday and school was still out. Drove out to San Bernardino with Damo and I was filming with Ty that day, working on a part with him. And I had seen this kid, um, this kid Trey on Instagram, feeble through this blue kink rail. It was like a really low kink rail. I think it was like an eight flat eight. And I saw someone else gap to the rail before too. And I was like, damn, that gap to rail looks sick. And I'd been wanting to skate it for at least like, at least like a few months before that. For some reason, throughout those past few months filming and skating, I was like so juiced on skating spots like that. I was like, any gap to rail I saw in the video, I was like, where is that at? I need to skate that. But anyway, saw this, saw this spot and I was like, damn, I really want to hit this. Finally, finally made it out there. And it was, it was hot as shit that day. It was like a hundred degrees out, out there in the desert, inland. And got there, was hyped up to skate. There was some people at the school. Um, so kind of had to like sneak back into this little back, back like basketball court area. Um, got to the spot, it was looking good. It was, it was actually a really interesting spot. It was like, it was a really low gap to rail and it was, but the roll up was really good. It was kind of like downhill roll up. And then like 20 feet before the rail, it actually started going like uphill to the point where it was almost like a launch ramp to this already low kinked gap to rail. And that was the main thing that sketched me out about the spot. When I saw it, I was like, damn, this seems way lower than I thought. And I went there planning on trying um, either like a nose blunt or nose grind on it. And then when I got there, I realized that I already had a nose blunt film with Ty already. So I was like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to go for gap grind to warm up and then I'm going to go for nose grind. And I had gap grinded a, like a, a bigger kink rail before that, like probably like a month or two before that. So I was feeling confident with going for that. But at the same time, I was like, damn, this thing is so low. So when I was getting warmed up, starting to roll up to it, I was like, damn, I really got to like be precise on how I think about how I'm going to hit this thing. And I really got to make sure I'm going the right speed. Obviously you have to have to for a gap trail, because if you go too slow, then you're just going to get hung up and who knows what's going to happen. You're going to die. Um, and I mean, when it comes to skating a spot like that and a dangerous spot, I feel like I'm a very calculated person in general. And I feel like I'm good about being very putting a lot of thought into what I'm doing and what I need to do to not only land a trick like that, but also like stay as safe as possible and not just be, get there and be like, oh, I'm so hyped. Fuck it. Let's send it and just go like I, I'm like, all right, I need to I need to take it, take the approach this way. I need to give this many pushes, this much, this much speed, pop this high. So um, basically the, the time was coming for me to finally go for this thing. And I'd warmed up on flat, I'm good to go, hyped up. There was even like a janitor working the school and he was all cool with us skating. He was actually hyped on us. And I, at this point I was just like hesitating with like a couple more roll ups, which is normal to do on a spot like that. Uh, I'm juiced, got the music going, Damo's there hyping me up. And literally like, I'm, I'm gonna go for this try. I'm like, all right, full commitment right here, boys. And cop rolls into the school. And the first thing that came into mind is we're rolled. Like session's done. I'm gonna have to come back another day if I wanna skate this thing. So I kind of like signal to him. I'm like, yo, like, is it, is it cool if I go for one? And then he's like, yeah, like go for it, send it. So after he was cool, and said I could go, I still thought like, all right, should I, like, like, does this feel right? Should I still be going for this right now? And then I was just like, I don't know. I mean, that's just, that's just my mentality in skating a spot. Like if I, when, when I see a cop roll up, I'm like, all right, like I feel even more committed to go for it. So I'm like, all right, I'm going for it right here. Throw down. And as I'm throwing down, I'm like, hmm, do I, do I go straight for nose grind or I just do I go for gap grind? And like that went through my head. I was like, nose grind, gap grind. I knew I was going for one of them. And I was like, I don't want to get greedy and I don't want to get ahead of myself. So I'm just going to go for grind. And then if I do land it, hopefully he'll give me a couple more tries after to try the nose grind. I get up to the rail, get a good pop. And literally, as soon as I hit the rail, my truck slip off. Like there was no 
time to change any way I was going to fall or anything. It just all happened way too fast. I, I thought I was going to at least make it to the bottom of the rail. I was fully committed to landing the grind, but literally as soon as I got on, just boom, slipped off. And the rail was pretty low to the ground, so I didn't even like, I didn't normally on a bigger rail, you would have fallen, you probably wouldn't even have landed on your feet if that would have happened. You would have just slid to your butt, probably like bruised your tailbone or something. But the way I fell, I landed with like my legs like straight out. And I basically just landed in a very like kind of freak accident, very unlucky way. Because I mean, obviously you guys have seen me take plenty of gnarly slams before and I've never had an injury even close to this. So as soon as I, as soon as I hit the ground, my knee was in so much fucking pain, I was tripping. I literally thought I was gonna look down at my leg and my leg was gonna be like fully broken. That's how much pain I was in. And I've also never broken a bone before, so I don't really know exactly what it feels like. So I was like, holy shit, like I'm, I'm, I'm fucking hurt. I'm really hurt. I knew instantly, I was like, dude, so I, didn't know, I didn't know I tore my ACL. I didn't know if I broke something. I didn't know exactly what happened, but I was like, something is seriously wrong because I've been in a lot of pain before and this shit is really bad. So I'm like laying on the ground. I actually tried to get up for a second to just like probably just out of adrenaline to try to figure out if I can even put pressure on my leg. And I couldn't, I like fell right back down to the ground. And I was just like, at this point, it was so hot. I was like hundred degrees out. And I was just like, I was just trying to breathe and just like gasp for air at this point, just try to stay alive. <laughs> And I like catch my breath and stuff. I try to move my leg a little bit and it's just not happening. So the boys had to, um, the boys had to help me back to the car. I actually sat on my board and they just like rolled me back to the car because I could not put any pressure on my leg at all. Um, Domo drove my car home, got, got back and, you know, just, just started resting, icing my knee for the next few days. I still didn't know what was wrong with it. And I've never tore anything this major before. I have torn some ligaments in my wrist, but that's much different. Um, so I think that, yeah, that was on a Friday. So I didn't go to Dr. G till Monday. And then I didn't actually get, in, get the MRI until a week after because I really didn't think anything was torn. And actually Dr. G didn't think it was either. He thought that the worst thing that probably happened was my tibia being fractured up here because I showed him the fall and he, he thought that my two bones like kind of from up here and down here hit each other and it caused like a bad bone bruise and maybe a fracture in my tibia which also ended up happening. After the MRI, I go to Dr. G's office again just to have a normal session working on my leg trying to get it better. And he, as soon as I walk in, he looks at me and he's just like, bro, like got, got really bad news for you. And I was just like, dude, no way. What's he about to say right now? And he's like, yeah, you fully tore your ACL. You have partial tears in both sides of your meniscus and you have a fracture in your tibia. And I was literally like, my mind was literally blown. I was like, dude, there's absolutely no way this is happening right now. And I mean, I've, you know, I've, I've, I've been through like some rough moments in life that have really hurt me, um, you know, mentally and physically. And there's just nothing that compares to this. Like I can't even describe like how, how heartbroken I was when I heard this news. Like I literally felt like, I felt like just empty. I felt just like lifeless. I was just like, dude, my whole life literally just got like, ripped out of, out in front of me and I mean there's a lot there's a lot more that go, goes into feeling that way aside from you know missing out on a few contests or um, just not being able to skate for however long six months or however long this is going to take um, I mean it's really like it, it's it's like my life you know it's really anyone who knows me and anyone who's been following me for a long time now, they, they know how, how much I genuinely love skateboarding and how much, how much being on my board means to me and how much it's a part of my daily life. And like even the days, 
even the days when I'm not skating, I'm, I'm, I, I, I go hard and hit the streets on a Saturday and maybe a Sunday. And then Monday, Tuesday comes around and I'm already thinking about the next spot that I'm hitting. You know, I might be recovering for the next couple of days because I'm sore as fuck from sending some shit, but my mind is already on like, all right, like what's, what's the next spot we're hitting? I'm watching skate videos, finding new spots. Like that's, that's really like how much I love skateboarding. And especially this year, even compared to other years, like I've, I feel like I've found like a whole, whole new love for it um, somehow, you know, even after skating for 20 plus years, I, I somehow still find, find ways to love it more and more. But yeah, I mean, the most I've been off my board has been, I think, three months. Um, so to have this one, I don't know. I still don't know exactly how long it's going to be. But let's talk about the surgery a little bit. Um, going into the surgery, um, Dr. G set me up with uh, the main guy that he sends people to. A lot of moto guys, surfers, skaters, Dr. Kramer, Newport Beach. Had a meeting with him before it happened, and he made me feel very confident that it was going to go well. And once, once we did the surgery, and <laughs> dude, I'm not gonna lie, like I was scared as fuck to have the surgery. I've never had surgery in my life. Even even when I, when I was a kid skating, I never, like even if just just as a kid growing up, my dad was never the type of person to take me to the hospital. Even if I had like hit my head hard as fuck, probably had a bad concussion or like cut the fuck out of my shin and I'm like bleeding everywhere, my dad just wouldn't take us to the hospital. It just like wasn't a thing which I think is kind of crazy, but kind of sick in a way. So before the surgery, I was like, damn, like I'm like, no, there's not a lot of things in life that like really scare me, but I was like, fuck, like I'm, I'm genuinely like scared right now. And they, they put the IV in me and everyone in there is like super nice. They're like trying to keep you calm and stuff. And then they're like, all right, like we're going to start, I'm sitting on like the, the bed thing. I'm in the hospital gown and I'm there like, all right, like we're going to roll you into this other room. And then I'm like, all right, like, here we go, going into the other room. And then all of a sudden, just out. Don't, don't remember even going into the surgery room. Next thing you know, I wake up and the surgery's done. And I'm laying there, I'm, you know, pretty out of it still, obviously. And uh, got, I got my friend there with me. I got my mom there with me. And I was able to um, leave, like, leave the hospital basically right after surgery, got taken home. And... I had this machine that was getting set up that was just like helping me start getting my motion back. And stuff like that is really important in, as far as like getting this thing like back to normal as fast as possible. And then after the surgery, I talked to Dr. Kramer, I think like a day or two after, and he's like, actually no, he let me know like right after the surgery, he's like, hey, like I wanna let you know that like the surgery went a lot better than expected. That's basically it right there. I've been wanting to share this story with you guys since it happened and just wanted to heal up a little more first, but happy I was able to show the fall and, you know, as, as much of a bummer it is, it's a part of the game. It's the life I chose. It's the life I live and bad things are going to happen sometimes and I just try to be thankful that it, it at least took this long and try to take it, take it day by day and think positive and knowing that the surgery went really well. I want to thank Dr. Kramer for doing the surgery, doing a great job, making me feel confident that I am going to be back 100% and I'm, I'm still juiced. Don't worry guys, I'm coming back. I'm still motivated, still going to go out there, hyped to get back and get back in the streets as soon as possible, still hyped to go out there and compete. But really, I'm just looking forward to getting back on my board, even if it's just skating flat ground. I'll probably be skating ledges for a while, skating some more mellow stuff. But we will be back to 100% sending it soon here. Um, and aside from that, man, I've just been, my daily life has just been going to PT every day. I literally go to physical therapy religiously. I go to Dr. G a couple times a week, and then I have a place here in L.A., that I go to like six days out of the week and we're actually about to go hit it right now. Even though it's Saturday, it's the weekend, we're still gonna hit some PT, so let's get it. This is my new spot in LA and look what we got here. Pioneer just dropped these off to me yesterday. Shout out Pioneer, thank you guys. It's a loner set for a month and I'm gonna start learning how to DJ finally. 
I've been wanting to learn for so so long now. Got a lot of homies at DJ. Hopefully that will keep me uh, keep me a little busy while I'm down and out here. Fuck, I'm late to PT. And it's a Saturday. These guys are gonna be over me. <laughs> that guy has my shoes on right there. That's sick. That's fire. He's got a sick colorway too. <laughs> How did I even just see that? <laughs> what up? I I I just saw the shoes. I was like, damn, he's got my you shoes see on. Me stepping shit in these shoes? No <laughs> way. <laughs> Fuck. Dude, I got like seven or eight pairs of these. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice yeah, clean those shoes off. Gotta do that. <laughs> yeah. That's, That's so gold. <laughs> All right, we're at PT. Let's That's do this. We're going to film some stuff today. Is that all good? We're doing a little YouTube, Sweet. little YouTube thing. Yeah, let's do it. Oh, I felt those ones so much. <laughs> yeah. I swear some of these small workouts don't look like much. Fuck, I'd be killing you. <sighs> Pretty overdoing these, not gonna lie. Done a lot of these past month or so. No, it's not that they're hard, it's just like, I don't know, I'm not a fan of the whole side plank thing. I hate it. any plank. Fucking annoying. Yeah. Can I take a picture with you? Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I noticed you from the back. <laughs> oh my god, I saw you from the back. I was like, that's Nigel. Nice <laughs> Thank you. Like, of course. Thank you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> the good news is, when I do come back, my knee actually, as long as I like continue to keep working hard at PT and stuff, my knee actually can be stronger than before because they like add something they call like a seat belt in there, which like goes like next to your ACL and it prevents your ACL from like stretching and tearing. So who knows, maybe I'll be able to take even more impact, more, more sending for, I'm going to be sending fucking 20 rails when I'm 50 now. <laughs> 